Let's move on. Uh, second presentation uh, by Ichiro Shibata from GK Design. So his title, uh, topic is service design in the old fashioned world. So everybody, I think you guys have a fantasy of Japan. So he will share something about this, also the meanings and interesting story and case and narrative from, by, with Japan. Okay, welcome. Take kind of 30 seconds, he will change his computer. He prepared a lot, that's why. After this presentation, you guys have a very short uh, networking time, so please eat outside, not inside. This is the rule of school, of course, eat a lot, but uh, not inside. Also, second floor, we have a uh, toilet, restroom. Please use a second floor. And also, I strongly recommend uh, many discussion with a uh, speaker. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. Thank you so much. Hello. Uh, so, uh, before starting my presentation, I need to take some evidence. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so today I would like to share about uh, the border of service and service design in design. And so, so this is my uh, professional history, but I don't want to go in details. But uh, my background is not design. Uh, I studied sociology, so my uh, profession is uh, design research or making st design strategy for uh, some new products or branding. And uh, as uh, Jaden mentioned, I'm working at GK Design Group, which was established about 70 years ago. So it could be the, the longest running modern design firm in Japan. We have started as an industrial design firm, but uh, along the change of the society and business, we have also expanding our design uh, domains. And we have offices in China as well, like uh, Shanghai and Chinta, we had offices. So if you have a chance to visit there, uh, please, uh, contact some GK members. And uh, I was living and working in Tokyo uh, about 30 years or something, but in this spring I moved to Kyoto. And GK Kyoto is uh, more focused on design strategy and consulting, just like making one product or one nice graphic. So this is just an introduction of my uh, background. And today's topic is about service design. But what is service? Actually, uh, we don't have uh, any proper word for service in Japanese. So we leave it as katakana and uh, pronounce it service. So it's a bit different. It's service and service is different. And let me show you some example. This is morning service, the worship in church, right? And this is also morning service in Japan. So a bit confusing. So what is service? What is service? So uh, uh, I look into some terminology and found maybe four aspects or four nature of service. So the origin of the word of service in Latin means slavery. That means a kind of forced labor. If you want to say it positive, it's kind of voluntary. Or, and also it's a kind of free of charge of work. So that the morning service in Japan is not a free of charge, but they call it service because it's a value for money. So almost uh, for free. 
and then uh, slave uh, become a servant, a servant under authority like uh, God, and king, and queen, and government. And then this servant era, I think, you know, social aspect comes to the service. Of course, they serve for some, uh, someone very uh, in the high level, but the result will be shared with the public. So the public, uh, the sense of public is added to the service, but of course, it's quite bureaucratic and like standardized and not so flexible. Then a uh, servant become a supporter, like uh, many industries set up a service center or you know, support center, like car industry. The car offering itself is selling cars, but they set up service center to take care after the purchase. So it's retentive and exclusive to the, the, the specific customers, but the, at this stage, still service is not the center of the business. It's either before or after, and core offering is different. Then, of course, finally, the service industries, like entertainment or restaurant and hotels and things like that. Then service become a core value of the offerings, and experience quite matters. So taking that uh, aspect, I just extract uh, four natures of service. It will be protocols or automated, or it could be quite organic, or it could be uh, optimized, or it should be quite emphatic. The other things I noticed from my experience that, that a service design is kind of close to the uh, branding. But uh, the branding and service design, the axis is completely different. This is a kind of uh, branding model, which is uh, explained with vertical things. So the top, there is a company who set up some brand promise, mission, vision, and value. And to realize that uh, ideal uh, concept, they utilize their human resources and set up some efficient systems, and they create and then they design several touch points like products, shops, services, or logo types and advertisement and anything. And once the user comes to interact some of or all of these uh, touch point, they got some experience and that experience is accumulated and making some stories and story creates a mental landscape in their mind. And if that mental landscape is similar to what a company want to deliver, then that branding, uh, I would say, is very successful. But in case of service design, as you all know, that uh, it's explained with a horizontal model because uh, the user or customer is the <coughs> center of service design. So he or she walks through all the touch point and gets some positive experience, then uh, the people uh, would love that kind, that business or that brand. So it, I think it's quite similar, but the how you tell the structure is different. And lastly, you know, service design is about uh, designing time. Uh, it could be very short period, but it could be very long term. Like, uh, yeah, as Professor Lee mentioned, that these days everybody is against uh, human-centered, and they are speaking about more, you know, ecology and environmental things. So if we, we if we need to deal uh, with environment or ecology with service design aspect, it could be a thousand of years of timeline will be needed or it should be considered. So uh, then, so what is service design or designing service? 
it has like four elements, I guess, like designing experience and touch point and systems and motivations. So this is just a summary. So uh, it's really hard to talk about something quite abstract. So latter part, I will show you a lot of images from uh, work of the GK design. So as I mentioned, GK design started as an industrial design firm. So although we are doing several uh, digital things, but today I would like to show you uh, service design from the tangible design side. So I will show you uh, like six cases. The first case is uh, designing experience. So this is a ferry uh, connecting uh, Hiroshima and Matsuyama, and it takes two, two hours and 40 minutes. And the project is that a development of new ferry, of the replacement of this ferry that built uh, 35 years ago. And the type of passengers are quite diverse. The students uh, use this ferry as a daily commuting, and business person uh, uses it for his business trips, and truck drivers uh, for the logistics, and of course, tourists. So we changed everything. Very fancy. But you know, uh, since the type of passenger is quite different, we created several spaces suited for their needs. Like some businessmen want to concentrate his uh, PC, and some young mother has to take care of her babies. Or tourists want to go outside and feel the uh, sea and wind. So we created several spaces for everybody's needs. And we even uh, made offering for the, to change the menu of food and beverage served on the ferry. And we also designed uh, the souvenirs. And we also uh, proposed to set up small library in the ferry because it takes nearly three hours. So we just proposed to put the books a lot about those regions. And actually we bought, uh, we selected that books. Yeah, and of course it's branding also, the, the naming and promotional stuff. But of course this is not just the making beautiful things. So it, it is, it was started as a, a extensive research, onboard research, observation and interviews. And also, uh, we have set up uh, several workshops with the uh, staff of the, uh, the client. Because, you know, uh, development of new, new ferry is a once in a five, once in a 35 years of experience. So maybe they, they work that company around 30 years. So there's only one chance to have uh, this kind of opportunities. <clears throat> the first one is that uh, we asked to create a future, uh, the newspaper on the day of the launch. Because you know, in the newspaper article, a key feature is well uh, introduced. So we asked them to think about what kind of feature could be the topic of the newspaper. And the second one is quite basic service design, applying very basic uh, service design methods. So we, pre we prepared uh, several types of personas and asked them to create a customer journey and asked them to think about what kind of service they, uh, they want to. <clears throat> So actually, you know, this is a kind of mobility design project, but also we uh, created uh, some experience in the ferry. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't design 
the entire journey, like uh, uh, designing ferry terminal or uh, maybe implementing a new ticketing system, that, that kind of thing, we couldn't do that because uh, different stakeholders are involved in that area. So even a client couldn't make it. The second one is a little bit similar to what a Japanese traditional uh, hotel, I, I mean, ryokan is offered. So we are designing uh, behavior. So this is a hotel entrance. Uh, the hotel is very close to Tokyo Station. Then staff came in, and then they have changed the panel. What is it? How do you think of it? So the, our intention is to inscribe the hospitality mind by doing these seasonal routines. It's traditionally expressed uh, by flower arrangement. Uh, we call it ikebana. But uh, in the modern hotel, we propose to do that uh, in a similar way, but using these uh, graphic panels. So every science system has uh, some replacement, replace, uh, replaceable part. And also we had a series of lectures to the hotel staffs about the, the relation between hospitality and design. So, yeah, many smart people may think, you know, using LED panel will be better or eff effective. You can have tons of images and you can change just one click. But that is not what we want to do that. Because, you know, the hospitality itself is, should be, you know, uh, inscribed through the physical behavior which uh, touched the heart of the staffs, and that behavior will touch the uh, hotel guests. The third one is uh, really not about service design, but you know, design is a kind of a service. So it's a design service. So, but I, I just want, went too quick, I just go quickly. So the client is the uh, manufacturer of the metallic file for industrial use. And as you can easily imagine, this kind of industry is decreasing. And they are looking for a new product, and for especially for the consumer market. And the final result is this. It says cat groomer. What is it? What is cat groomer? It's this. So it's taming cat with these tools, and the surface of the tools, we had an inspiration from the tongue of cat. But uh, again, so this is not a, a case of product design or branding design, because the problem was that they don't have enough money to invest to create a new mold for that product. So they went to the crowdfunding. So before uh, finalizing the product design, we designed a promotional video for the crowdfunding to attract supporters. And they collected uh, nearly 10 times of the first uh, set it goal. <laughs> and of course, some promotional things. Yeah, then uh, the, that product uh, the big well success, it's well successful. It has a lot, it makes a lot of money. So that, that success story has changed the mindset of the manufacturer, the client. And they are more, you know, uh, positive to challenge to a new product, a new way of thinking. So it's just a design service, but it, could change the attitude of the client. 
So uh, when I attended the, the conference of service design, uh, no one talked about product. And many of them are proudly saying, oh, we are changing the organization by service design. I don't really understand. <laughs> but <coughs> we do similar thing. <laughs> The client is Sumida World. Maybe if you have chance to go to Japan or Tokyo, you can see this the sky tree, the, the tallest tower in, in Tokyo. And the Sumida uh, World asked us to help to revise their uh, development plan for their local industry and tourism. So this is the report of the previous one, which we were not involved in. So it's quite uh, bureaucratic. It's well made, but lack of emotion, and no one want to read. So uh, we want to make it more empathic, and we want to make it more co-creative way. So again, uh, we have set up a series of workshops with the civil servants. And I will explain the story storytelling part. Like this is quite a simple structure. So we again set up several personas who will be important for the future of Sumida, like owner of small factories or students or foreigners, tourists or just a resident, or elderly, and something like that. And then we also prepared several uh, future mega scenarios, which was made in the previous workshop. And we put together and asked them to create some stories around it. So how people interact in that situation, and how, they, how might they work together, and what will be the conflict. So this is just a snapshot. And these uh, things, the, the different roles are named, which is quite common if you go to the service design conference. You know, uh, many diverse people are joining together, things like that. So I just make it like that. <laughs> And then uh, this is just the, uh, the direct result of the workshop. So it's only in Japanese. But later, uh, we uh, edit it and make a nice story and put in the, into the development plan, which is quite unusual things. So this one is about maybe we could help uh, them to think more creative way by applying design thinking method or service design method. The other uh, case is about uh, nursing home. But this one is actually a uh, discontinued pro project uh, due to the COVID-19. So we made small workshop and small observation only. But uh, this one is also maybe connected to the theme of this uh, conference. So the client asked us ask, ask to how can we reduce the workload of care workers by enabling technology. That means, you know, Japan is famous for the super aging country. So number of elderly are significantly increasing, and I'm one of them. And then the, the care workers are also decreasing because you know, entire population is shrinking. So not only this industry, but every industry are now facing the shortage of human resources. So as I mentioned, we did uh, one workshop and uh, one day observation. And through workshop, uh, we found out several uh, pain points. One of then was that uh, miscommunication in the shift change meeting. You know, there is a night shift staffs and day shift staffs, and they have a meeting in the morning. 
and uh, transfer information, uh, someone need um, more care or someone is maybe couldn't sleep well or something like that. But that kind of transfer of information, often uh, miscommunication happens uh, because they don't have time to make a proper report or they don't know how to make a good report. So in, th in this area, uh, we think technology can help or reduce their workload and make it more efficient. And this is uh, from the observations. Yeah, so there are so many human care are there. And, you know, caring for elderly is what they really want to do. And that is also of their pride. But in fact, they don't have time to uh, face with uh, elderly because so many other things they have to manage, like uh, some preparations in the background or the communication problems. And of, of course, they need to uh, watch how uh, the facility is managed with safety and no accident happens. So like uh, highlighted in LED, can be, uh, we can apply some technology to help them or make more time to uh, communicate with our elderly. This is just a, a small uh, observations, but uh, I think this area is quite a serious problem and service design will be needed. The last one is, of course, an, an, another uh, unorthodox example. So uh, in 1995, there's a huge earthquake hit Kansai area. And uh, one of my colleagues in GK Kyoto, he actually suffered from it. And later, or three months later, uh, he thought how he can use his skill, like design, to prevent a uh, mega disaster in the future. So he visited several uh, institutes and universities, and he finally met some professors and researchers in Kyoto University. Then uh, GK Kyoto and Kyoto University started uh, collaborations. And uh, the academic side mentioned that to prevent or to raise awareness about these disasters, the, the communication method should be uh, improved. So that's why so designer joined to this academic research. And we did several things. Like the first one is just we uh, making new uh, pictograms or new signage. Surprisingly, there was no uh, standard sign for tsunami at that time. So they designed it and it became uh, international standards now. And they made some uh, hazard maps. And some of them are available in a digital format. And they even published a picture book to raise awareness of or importance of a proper evacuation for kids. And also they organized uh, evacuation training in the real situation. And we have designed several promotional tools. And this uh, mega evacuation training becomes uh, a self-training app. So you can use this app and you can plan uh, how uh, 
you could successfully escape from a tsunami or earthquake. So this is one example, like this guy uh, trying to find out the way. And his wife is coming down. <laughs> nice. And anyway, uh, he success successfully uh, reached the, the safe place in time. So this is not a kind of, you know, we created several touch points, but this is not a sequential, not in line, but it's a multi-accessible touch point. And the next step is they are planning to use that data from the app for the city planning or redesign of uh, evacuation point or rebuilding the road. So the, uh, we will utilize that data from the app. So uh, finally, uh, this is almost last slide. So from my presentation, I could say that uh, design touch point still can represent the core service value. So of course, it's a, it should be uh, designed in along with the timeline, but still each single touch point can represent the core service value. And secondary, you know, design methods or service design methods can motivate and change mindset of stakeholders and help them to create more essential service value. And the third one is uh, like kind of goodwill can continuously drive and sustain service for all. And uh, in the beginning, I in my title, I put border of service and service design and design. So service is something embedded in mindsets and behavior. So it should be quite emphatic motivations. And service design, it's my understanding, but it, service design turns value of service into a valid system. So it's kind of protocol system. And design makes value of service tangible. So it's a kind of optimized touch point, and all together it could sustain organic experience. I hope uh, my poor English can explain better, or at least some of them. Okay, thank you very much.